What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scooby and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're on part three of our series of how to pack for a dive trip. And if you saw part one, we did the checklist. Part two, we looked at service and gear. And now we're going to look at exactly how to pack your gear so that you can do it very efficiently and make sure you have all the equipment that you need. <music> So for part three of this series, what we're going to do is look at how you can separate your gear out between the different luggage cases that you choose to use and why it's important to always make sure that everything goes where it needs to be. Simply stowing it away is not always the best thing if you're going to be overweight, say for airlines. Plus, there are certain types of equipment you always want to have with you. So we're going to see how separating it out instead of putting it all in just one container is really going to help you when you travel. Now, I've got several different containers here that we're going to look at, but at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a link to a video we made last year showing you how I actually got two sets of dive gear in just these simple little cases here and I was able to travel and still stay within the weight. So with that being said, let's jump into this video and see how these cases are laid out. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and start with our check luggage first. Now, this is typically where we put all of our bigger items. This is also where I'm going to put some of my personal items, such as my clothing, my personal toiletries, things like that. They will also go and check luggage as well. I prefer the Pelican Air 1615 series just because it's very lightweight, but it's going to keep my equipment secure and safe, and it's very easy to travel with. Now, as I open it up here, the very first thing that you will notice is there is a checklist. It's the exact same checklist that I had earlier where I was putting all my equipment together. I do like to put it in here so that once I get to my destination, I can open up my box. I can very easily go through the checklist and verify that it's all here and that say no one from the airline actually took it. Now the items that go in here are important items, but they're not the bare necessities I must have. So these are the items that I can typically rent if something happens to this or if I lose this. I do have a boat bag in here. I've got my fins in the very bottom. I do have my BC down below the boat bag. Of course, I've got my exposure suit here. I've got a couple of towels. On top, of course, that's where I'm going to carry my boots, my spare mask, and it is a spare mask. Our primary mask will always go in our carry-on. I do have a snorkel here, a flashlight, and a little bit of defog. Now, there is still plenty of room left in here. I can actually store a lot of different items in these storage compartments as well, such as extra underwear, socks, t-shirts, shorts, things like that that I'm going to need when I'm out in the tropics. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the carry-on and see just exactly what we put in a carry-on. Now, the next storage device that I use for travel, of course, is my personal carry-on. And in my personal carry-on, that's where I'm going to carry the items that are most important to me. These are the items that I'm not necessarily going to be able to rent when I'm out there, and it's the items that I need to make sure fit me properly. Now, I preferred a backpack-style carriage device, and this is just a Mares Journey backpack here. I've actually had this back for several years. It's probably time for me to actually upgrade it. But we're going to take a quick look at just some of the items in here, and I want to talk a little bit about why I carry them on the plane. Here on the side, of course, is just a little storage pouch. This is where I'm going to keep any personal documents, say maybe my passport or anything like that. I can even keep my wallet in it when I'm in there or whatnot. On the front here, of course, this is where I'm going to keep the quick accessible items, such as maybe my mask, my computer, my compass, the things that I want, the things that need to fit me, the things that set up for me. That's what I'm going to keep in here. I can also keep items in here such as cameras and specialty items that, of course, need to stay with me as well. So I can put all my camera devices in here. I can put video cameras. I can put diving cameras. Anything that I don't want damaged by the airline can go in here. And then, of course, in the big compartment, this is where we're going to keep our personal reg set because these reg sets are set up specifically for us and we want to keep them with us. You'll also notice that I have a secondary checklist that's going to go in here as well. There are certain times that when you go flying on a plane, they will ask you there at the very end, would you like to check your carry-on? And if you're the type that wants free checked luggage and you decide to check it, I still like adding that checklist on there because it's going to guarantee that I have the items that I need or if those items happen to disappear, I'll actually have a little checklist that tells me what items are missing as well. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at, is, of course, is my personal item. If you've ever been on a flight before, you understand you get a check luggage, you get a carry-on, and you get a personal item. Well, my personal item, I choose some type of dry bag system. And I prefer the dry bag systems because they're dual purpose. You can use this once you get to your destination as an everyday carry bag, or you can use it as a boat bag as well. It's going to keep your clothes, it's going to keep maybe your phone or even your towel dry when you're out on a boat. Now, what do I actually travel or take with this? 
or put in this bag when I travel. Of course, this is where my laptop's going to go. It's where most of my electronics are going to go. Maybe my chargers for my phone and things like that. That's what's going to go in here. And of course, I also like it because I can put one extra change of clothes in here just in case if all my luggage gets lost, I'll still have a change of clothes and a couple little small toiletry items that I can use when I'm on a trip until my equipment or say my luggage finally arrives. But that's going to be the last item that we look at because I think it's a great item. It's a dual purpose item that's going to serve you well when you go travel. So there you go guys, that is part three in how to pack for a dive trip. Now we made a video last year for you, a more in depth video if you will, on how to pack if there's multiple people from your family going as well. And I showed you how I got two complete sets of dive gear and luggage for up to four people all packed down in small little components and we were able to get on our trip and back from our trip and never lose any of our equipment. So definitely check that video out. I'll link it up here and I'll link it down in the description for you. I think it'll be a good watch for you. But we do got another part of this Series, so definitely stay tuned because we're going to talk about what smaller items you may want to consider, what redundancy items you may want to consider taking with you whenever you travel for diving. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below. I'll try to answer it the best as I can and as quick as I can as well. Guys, until then, take care. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.